soon. Chase, would you start us off? Like, just for the pledge. Pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. No, that's the red wire. You just want to cut the red wires. <laughs> have you uh, have you all had a chance to take a look at the uh, the minutes from the uh, regular meeting on the 28th of September and the special meeting from October the 19th? On October the 19th, have you had a chance to look at those. If so, and there are no corrections, I'd entertain action first of all on the minutes on the 28th. Do I have a motion to approve? Motion made by government to approve. Second. Seconded by Fitzwater. Those in favor? That's 4 0. Thank you. How about on the 19th? Do I have a motion for those minutes? Motion to approve. Goodman, motion to approve. Okay. Second by Fitzwater. Yeah, uh, sure. Those in favor of <laughs> approval? 4 0. Thank you very much. Okay. And the uh, the minutes for the uh, uh, Board of Works on September the 9th and the 23rd for information only. Um, going uh, down to communications. Virgia, here yeah. from Hope. Virgia Smith, you have the okay. floor. You get two of us. Oh, you get two of us, double. Yes, okay. I'm Bonnie Dunbar. I'm the president at this time of Fulton County Hope. I've been president for the last two years. I don't know, where am I supposed to stand? Or yeah, anyway, it works fine, Bonnie. <laughs> okay, so we thank you. Picked up uh, uh, you're on TV. Bye. I want to, I know that's why I said, do they want my back or recording in my best side? This is theater just, in the round, right, Virgin? <laughs> I'm just going to pass a couple of these out here for you. This is our resource guide, but um, we're not here looking for anything today. We're, we're here to uh, thank you, and Virgin will take care of that. I just wanted to let you know, uh, in reference to what she's going to talk about, and I've been saying this to a lot of the meetings and places that we go, uh, the people that Virgia has been helping through Hope for the Homeless are people that cannot be helped anywhere else. If you don't have an address, you cannot go to your trustee. If you don't have an address, you cannot go to United Ministries. If you don't have an address, you can't go to the United Stand Ministries of Akron. Unfortunately, we don't help them. So, I mean, I say we because I'm part of United We Stand Ministries of Akron. So I kind of know these things, and this is why it's important that we have started this program. We're hoping because we are just a resource group. Fulton County Hope is a resource group. And we are trying to pass it on to some organization that would like to take care of that because it is a lot of work for Virgia. And Virgia's going to talk about a few things, but thank you for letting us come tonight. And she'll take over from, from there. Okay. Thank you, Bonnie. I thought that uh, you would like to know how I spent your money. Um, well, first of all, let me congratulate you because very few people do this. <laughs> Thank you for coming and letting us know this. Thank you. If you look at the paper that I gave you, uh, with your money, I put 10 adults and 7 children under roofs. And that is for down payment and first month's rent. Uh, you'll notice that Oakwood Apartments was only $121. And that was the full amount because of the lack of income from this young man who has some challenges but has custody of his son. And I asked at the time if they had, you know, if he needed anything. And he said, no, I think we'll be fine. So I got a call back from him. Can you please come over and help me talk to them to get my electricity turned on? I went over. And I found two sleeping bags on the floor. I found some paper bowls. I found some plastic silverware. And I looked in the refrigerator and we had some milk and a couple things in the refrigerator, but not much. And other than that, there was nothing in that apartment. So um, 
since we started this home for the homeless, I found that a lot of these people will have maybe the backpack on their back, and that's basically what they've got. And so uh, I was able to furnish this apartment, like I have done with all of them, and with donations from people that we collect at St. John Lutheran. And in that, I'm saying that not only did we provide beds and couches and chairs, and that we also gave him some groceries, and uh, I have clothing there, and I got dishes and silverware for him, pots and pans, whatever it takes to run the house. And uh, we keep it at, at St. John Lutheran, we keep those things on hand. So, uh, and the rest of them there, you can see that uh, most all of them have children. A lot of them are, uh, you know, some of them are single, single parents. Um, I'm not sure that I've got, uh, maybe one of the couples is actually married. Um, but um, my main concern is the children. You know, we heard a report last year that uh, at the high school there were 56 students that report into the counselor every night to tell them where they will be because they don't have a safe environment at home. So uh, we do, I've gotten people out of cars. I've gotten people that are along the railroad tracks. Um, I helped a girl the other night that's got, um, had a backpack and we did get her into um, rehab and she called me and said she's doing well. So, uh, unfortunately, um, most people look at the homeless as saying that they've got a problem with drugs or something like that. Statistics show that the ordinary population, about 19% have a problem with some kind of drugs or alcohol. Homeless, it only goes up to 26%. Uh, some of the people that I've put into housing are older, and I got one lady out of a situation where she was being abused by her son. So I've got her in her own little place now, and she's thrilled to death to be there. And uh, we had a couple of ladies, too, that are older that uh, we put into a, a safe situation. So, uh, you know, there's a lot of uh, these cases that it's not, and my one requirement for all of them is you either have to have a job or you have to have enough money coming in to pay the rent because I don't want to set them up to fail. It seems to me if you can't pay the next month's rent, then what's the point of the whole thing? And not only that, but you have landlords then that look at you and say, you know, I'm not sure I want to put any more into it. But I do have some now that will call me when they have a place due. So uh, at this point, uh, I have zero money to work with. So it's on hold until we can get additional funds, and we're working on trying to do that. So I thank you very much for the money. I just wanted to let you know where it went and, and how we spent it. Well, thank you very much. And you probably have heard this said once before, but this council was uh, very eager to help out when they heard you were going to manage it. Thank you. Uh, that spoke volumes to this group. Uh, you have a pretty good track record, Virgin. I mean, that husband of yours hasn't held you back one little bit. I know. <laughs> he and I are very good friends, yeah. by the way, yeah. out there, yeah. aren't we? Yeah. We yes. go way yeah. back. Way back. Yeah. Uh, no. Uh, all they had to do was say Virgis Smith, and it was wasn't that right, folks? We were just all everybody up here was yeah. This has so. got to be a good thing because we know you do it right. So you know, if in the future you know you have some funds that you can help us with, that would be less appreciate it. Well, see, I've been surprised if you hadn't asked that. Because you, you always knew how to close. Yeah, right. Too. Yeah. <laughs> so, thank you Well, I, to, be, to be honest with you, as far as right now, shot it, we're, we're stretched right now. Right. We're down to the end of the year. I know. And, but, uh, 
certainly but still, tell them to come I back wanted, and see I, us next Even year. though I knew it was the end of the year yeah. and all that, you wanted I to still report. I wanted to report back how I spent your money, which I think is the right thing to do. Absolutely, absolutely. And you and Bonnie, God bless you both. He you does every day. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> absolutely, absolutely. Yeah. And, and we thank you. Yeah. Any questions yeah. or anyway. for Virgia or, or Bonnie? Mm -hmm. Yeah, you're still, you're still looking ask. for any donations of furniture and pots yeah. and pans and kitchen right, stuff right. like that, right? Right, right. And if they could be delivered, it would be appreciative, but we find <laughs> helpers. And a lot of times, like Saturday, uh, we were working the uh, pumpkin patch, and, and uh, she had it in the back of her car and just took it right to the client's apartment. Okay. So we don't, sometimes it doesn't even get in the church because it's right. so needed. Now, your, your, uh, your furniture and your pots and pans, are you utilizing goodwill or how, where are you going? Oh, no, this? word of mouth. Oh, no. Just word of mouth. Oh, oh yeah. yeah, people oh. call me, yes. they call the Hope Line, and, okay. and I had two calls last week, and they just call and say, I've got some things for you, and uh, people from garage sales, if they have some leftover, or if I'm happy to happen to go to a garage sale, and, yeah. and I just fill up my car, and away we go. Yeah. And I, was, I spoke to uh, Passionate Health that asked me to come and speak at noon, and uh, I came away with a whole carload of stuff. They had brought pillows and, and different things. So, Wonderful. Anything else? Rochester is a very generous town, really. I think that most people here just don't realize the extent of the people that, you know, are sleeping at the laundromat and, you know, various places around town. You know, for just 16 years ago when I started down the trail on the city council, these stories would come up. And at that time, and I suspect it still goes on, there were a number of children who would report to high school every day and get a shower and yeah. change of clothes right. along with their breakfast every mm -hmm. day. Yeah. And some would go home with teachers to spend the night. Yeah. Such, I believe yeah. that yeah. stopped. Yeah. But there was a lot of that. Yeah. yeah. Thank you very much. Okay. Uh, and Councilman Wilson, thank you for coming by. Uh, I passed this out before we go down to the salary ordinance real quick. I passed this out. I don't know how many of you noticed this, but this was a, uh, not to be snarky or anything, but this was a notice that was in the paper last week of a $3.5 million bond. That was my commentary there. Uh, this is one of the differences in the judiciary uh, dealings uh, of the city and county. Uh, we would never bond these items. These are what we call uh, disposable assets. Cars, trucks, what have you. Um, you guys, those of you who've been here for a while have never seen us bond anything like that. We, we have two bonds oh out, God. and they are for resources that are going to be sustaining for a long time, and they're on the utility side. They're not backed up by tax money. So they're backed up by utility uh, fees and that is a water tower that we built south into town and the upgrading of the waste treatment department those are all hard assets that are going to be around for a long time not a vehicle that's going to be expired in six seven years um, anyway i just wanted you to take note of that that we would not uh, ever go down that route that's 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 a different route to approach financing your, your operation. Um, okay, the um, we'll, we'll delay on the city projects and the ARPA plan to go right to the salary ordinance. Thank you, Todd, for coming by. Uh, it's ordinance 13-2021. Uh, we've had the first reading, is that correct? No, we have not had any reading. Okay. No reading. Do I have a motion? I will move that we had the first reading by title only. Okay. Moved by Goodman, seconded by Smith. <clears throat> Those in favor? First reading by title only. Okay. Ordinance number 13-2021, an ordinance fixing the salaries for the employees of the city of Rochester, Indiana for the year 2022. Okay, any discussion? 
do I have a motion for the second reading of Ordinance 13-2021? So moved by title only. Okay, seconded by Wilson. Smith made the motion, seconded by Wilson. Those in favor? <laughs> okay. All right, unanimous. Ordinance number 13-2021, an ordinance fixing the salaries for the employees of the city of Rochester, Indiana for the year 2022. Okay, discussion. Andy, just a question. Uh, we don't have to have, we don't have to read this in its entirety at any point, do we? No, I mean, if the, the way your ordinance is written is that uh, the second one is the only one contemplated to the only second reading is the only reading contemplated to read its entirety. And if it is unanimous uh, that you not do so, if no one objects to it, you could always do all three by time law. Okay, that's all I agree. Okay, any uh, discussion? I would uh, ask for a motion to suspend the rules and have the third reading by title only. So moved. Second. Moved by Goodman, seconded by Fitzwater. Those in favor? Okay. All right, ordinance number 13-2021, an ordinance fixing the salaries for the employees of the city of Rochester, Indiana for the year 2022. Okay, those in favor of adopting the ordinance 13 I'll make a motion for the adoption of ordinance number 13-2021. Okay, those second? second. Goodman, uh, third. motion, Smith seconded. Those in favor of adopting the ordinance and it's Marty, are you voting? Oh, yes. <laughs> Marty's abstaining. <laughs> he made the motion, but he's abstaining. No, you don't. Just because you make the motion. Wow. Well, yeah, yeah, I get that. I'm waiting for yeah. you are to you, say opposed. Are, are, you, are you the new Burns? <laughs> <laughs> the Robert oh. Jones of Order. And for the That's public, my phrase. Yeah, yeah, right. For the public, it, it was a six page document. <laughs> and Nobody really wants to sit here and listen to. It. No, thanks. So I, I won't take that as much. So. <laughs> it's for your benefit as much as ours. Although we do love to hear Brian read. We know it would come back for it. It's a benefit to good. Okay. Well, thanks yeah. for I mean, coming. He, he reads now than he did. That's right, Todd. Thank you. Well, if you need to excuse yourself, you can do so. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Thank you very much. Appreciate it. Yes, thank you, Todd. I, I probably appreciate it more than anybody. Otherwise, you could be meeting us again later this week for this. <laughs> yes. So I signed this. Do I need to sign yeah. all the others? Yep. Go ahead and sign if you want to go ahead and sign all the list. Yeah, that's a good, yeah. good point. I do not have a copy of the resolution that's on the agenda. And then goes up here. Well, I am not surprised by that. But Why don't you have a resolution? Chase has my one only copy. It wasn't in there. It wasn't in there. No, it wasn't because I didn't get it until. What time did you email that to me? Something drafted. So is it just two to sign that? The resolution? The yeah, because you weren't here for the passing of the minutes. So you know, unless you want, you can sign those if you want, but you weren't present for those. I've read them. So. Um, I don't know where the documents ended up. <laughs> you want to stick around just a second to sign the resolution? That'd be fine. I'll take you. I did. Pretty cool. Oh, you did. Okay. Yep. Just. It's uh, resolution 06-2021. This is uh, this is entered in. This is part of the uh, project list. Thank you, gentlemen. gentlemen this is part of the project <laughs> list. Uh, oh, yeah. Yeah, we haven't passed it yet. He, he we probably copied just um, if we need it. Resolution 06-2021 that we're introducing here. Uh, a couple of weeks ago before I left for my Indianapolis surgery, we had a meeting. Marty was present down at, down at your office. And uh, Commissioner uh, Lewis and I got in a discussion about the lights uh, downtown. There are nine lights that are that uh, surround the courthouse that are, they're the same vintage as our downtown lights. And I wanted to make sure he was aware of what we found when we were replacing these lights downtown. Uh, we haven't, we haven't gotten those any too soon. They were eroding at the base. We thought we might be able to keep a few of the poles and use them elsewhere. That's not the case. They're, they're that corroded. Somewhere online, one's gonna 
fall over. Uh, and we were concerned then about the nine that are left around the courthouse. And there was some discussion, as you know, as to who had the ownership of that. Uh, county had looked at their electric bill and said they couldn't see where they were paying anything on it. They thought it was clearly the city's responsibility. And I said, well, we haven't seen anything. Duke, I called Kevin Johnston, and he was kind of up in the air on it. He said, Mayor, we're trying to straighten these things out. With communities like yourself were going down the list and trying to straighten all that out. It was apparently something that was not just unique to us. They, when we went through the whole community for the 500 lights, uh, I think we surprised them on a couple that they found. They had The records weren't that great. So anyway, uh, kicked it around uh, with Shada and, and the Board of Works, and I'm not going to get into a contest with the county over that chance having one of those fall over and wipe out four cars at the car show or worse kill somebody or whatever so i've asked that this resolution be considered by the council that we take the ownership of it no matter what and i talked to brian about this today lewis and i said i'm going to present this to the council we might as well bundle them into the 27 that we have and the take care of the electrics and the maintenance on them moving forward, and then we'll put it in a resolution form so there'll be no question in the future. It won't be a gentleman's agreement or something on the back of a cocktail napkin. It'll be a record. So that, that's what this resolution is about. And then at uh, some point in the very near future, uh, we come to an <coughs> about funds from the day to cover the rest of the night. It also includes uh, Randy, yeah, you're back there. Was it four speakers would be part Three. of that group of nine? Would also, is it four or five? Three. Three. Three, okay. So be a little cheaper, yes. yeah. Three speakers, and of course the cement work and all that will be part of it as well. So anyway, that's what the resolution's all about. Uh, I would, uh, well, you wanna have some general discussion before uh, the reading of it, we can. Does that sound like planned to everybody? You kind of have a figure as to how much it's going to cost. I we have we've we've got uh, we've reached out for quotes from Michiana on it. Uh, I'm just guessing, just from what the 27 ran, probably another nine will probably cost us 80, 85 thousand, something like that. It's just a guess, though. The other thing you run into is um, <coughs> obtaining the polls and everything. So they're, they're researching that for us right now. It would probably be, we probably wouldn't get it accomplished until the first quarter of next year. Is that safe to say? I, based on what Randy reported, I would say easily. And now, and then 12 got, weeks for a lead time on the thing? was 12. Yeah. Yeah. 12 weeks, we haven't even got to quote back from Valmont yet, so it'll be 12 weeks after we order. Yeah. And uh, so uh, it'll probably be end up, I mean, up sometime in the first part of the next year before we can get it done. But um, I'm just here to tell you, they don't owe us anything. <laughs> They've been stretched to the limit. And I don't know how many of you have seen the downtown lit up at night, but I had the opportunity the other night for the first time to be driving downtown when they all came on at once. That's kind of interesting. Hello. Hello. <laughs> Boom. They're all, they all came on at one time, which is the timer rather than the, uh, the eye. So. They are nice. Does this give uh, city ownership? of everything downtown with the exception of the corner of 9th and Main? Because that those are state poles, right? Well, we, we've included those in it too. So okay. that we can, we have it all. Okay. We just have it all. That's nine, nine total. Okay. And by the way, the state has also given us permission to uh, paint the four traffic signals at 9th Street, the same color oh, as the rest okay. of ours have to. Yeah, they're, they're real good about that as long as they don't have to pay any money. <laughs> hey, that's, hey, that's a good idea. Yeah, You're not going to charge nice. us for that, are you? Yeah, yeah. Well, it will look nice. Yeah. 
Um, if there's no more discussion, could I have a motion for the reading of resolution 06 2021? So moved. Do I have a second? Moved and seconded by Fitzwater. Those in favor? Okay, 4 0. Go resolution ahead. number 06 2021. Whereas the Common Council of the City of Rochester, upon the representation and communication of its mayor and certain <coughs> officials of Fulton County has determined that it is in the best interest of the citizens of Rochester the city confirm its intent to maintain certain streetlights near the Fulton County Courthouse. Now therefore be it resolved that the city of Rochester shall maintain as its property the ninth street lights that surround the Fulton County Courthouse and a copy of this resolution shall be provided to the Fulton County Auditor as confirmation and clarification of the city's intent. Okay. Um. So Do you know something we could pay for this year, or are we thinking no. next year? Next year, next year. Twelve weekly time. Just remember that. Twelve okay. weekly time. So I don't know if we had the money to no. pay for it. It's fine. <laughs> <laughs> Where well, uh, I already done had that conversation with Ted. <laughs> All right, just. Uh, oh, thanks for asking, Chase. No problem. Do, do I have a motion to accept the resolution? I never. So moved. Second. <laughs> moved by uh, Goodman, seconded by Thompson. Those in favor of resolution 06 2021 and it's unanimous. Thank you all. Uh, all right, I, in talking yeah. with Brian, I said this will make both of us sleep better. Yeah. 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 No yeah. Uh, boy, Randy and. Uh, I was going to say, make sure those two uh, signed sure. everything, please. Randy and Dwayne came in with a trailer full of those poles and they said, come out here and take a look at this thing. It's amazing, wasn't it? Yeah. Didn't we have a, don't we have a picture of that, Randy? Yeah, but I didn't bring it with me. Mm. Infrastructure, 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 you know? Chase is going to be saying that this week. <laughs> just already. She can repeat it. Yeah, she wanted to just do it. So, when I was on the chase, I wanted to do it. Marvin, you can process. Okay. Thank you all. Uh, Old business, ARPA plan and ACT tool submissions. Oh, yeah, I'll go back to them. I want to talk about the old business and I'll scoot back to the updates. Thank you. Any, uh, you know, you guys met on the ARPA funds, any, uh, and the Baker Tilly uh, website that Anybody have a chance to right, check around with that? Checked earlier today and I saw that Chase had filled out his survey. I did my survey and Marvin his was in process. I don't know if I Davis? Yeah. Marvin? Yeah. Uh, Kay Davis started one. I just looked before the meeting. Kay started hers. Who else? You sent it out to department heads. Is yeah, department heads were all included. Okay. Um, all board member, all board presidents. It with the exception of, I think I included one on the redevelopment commission. I don't remember who. Um, and all of you, and myself. I haven't started mine yet. I just got back in town yesterday. You sit in the other room. Oh my gosh! There goes our quorum. <laughs> Come on, guys. I may have to sit in between you. <laughs> what, what's our what's our uh, hard deadline for that? To get our survey one, right? I think it was Monday. Moving target. I mean, you wanted we, the target. The target we Monday. were trying to get was to have our plan ready by December 31st of this year. So, Mr. Goodman's request on Tuesday was to have it all of the submissions and stuff in for this meeting, so you guys could continue a conversation. I know. Yeah. I know. So you're fine. I told him last Tuesday that wasn't going to be an option for me. So yes, so, I recall know, that conversation. He, uh, okay. Marty, of course, has been a lifelong insurance man. Is there a grace period for that that would have fronted him with? What well, period? considering it's no grace. You know what? It's in the council's hands. 
<laughs> or I'll just say, let me ask the attorney. <laughs> I am not an attorney. That is my that is my clause. Could could we <laughs> well, we, we need to get it done like within sooner a week, rather than so I say by if you guys work on it, if you guys take this and work on it and then we bring back at the November meeting, I would think that would Hopefully be Hopefully we have more than the four of us here. Right. So it's your job as the council president to send a little reminder out and put a I'm fire under. Good. I didn't read that in your good. job description. It, took me five it was yeah, in your job right. description. It's in the fine print. Yeah, yeah it, it, doesn't, take, it doesn't take very long. Just yeah. you know, look at yeah. the projects yeah. and allocating where you think the dollars should go, and then those it's pretty intuitive. All the results. It's yeah. Yeah. I mean, it really is. Yeah. Really is. is. They made it pretty user friendly. Mm -hmm. Good. But keep, but keep in mind when you do it and you're allocating funds, we've already allocated 50000 to the COVID test site at the county. Correct. Mm -hmm. Okay, so if, if we can have that pretty well whipped out by the next meeting, I made a note on that to uh, proceed down that road then. Okay, uh, update on our city projects very quickly. Uh, the uh, the waste treatment plant uh, upgrade, which is our, by far our biggest project, our $8 million state revolving fund loan, uh, it's moving along on target. Um, again, the, uh, the completion, it's, it's not an overnight project by any means. The completion is uh, mid-May of 2022. They're telling us we're still on target for that. There are some few hiccups on some of the materials. We will get an update on all of that with the Crosby uh, construction folks and the Commonwealth engineering firm on Friday. We'll, that will be our next um, pre uh, work update our, uh, that we, we meet uh, every other week here in the chamber and go over uh, and talk about any issues or such. So that, that's moving along pretty good. Uh, Happy to say our school view lift station project came right in on time. And uh, there's some pictures here that I wanted to pass out to show you all of the lift station. I did forward those to Did you forward these? In email, yes. It's uh, really, really looks nice and came out to be a really nice project. I uh, got the county to hook on uh, last Thursday, so they've been on a little little under a week so far and it, it, it's been in operation since the 8th and the uh, TGB construction folks have just did a wonderful job uh, they pulled the last vehicle out today so it, it's all complete um, the new salt barn that uh, we're having built is uh, uh, Still looking at uh, by uh, by the first part of November, we'll get our quotes together from the folks who uh, are giving us quotes to construct it, and we should have some work starting on that in November. So we're still we're still on date date with that. We like to get that cleaned up before the inclement weather comes, so we'll be pushing pretty hard on that. We do have a backup plan for uh, uh, retention of our salt and sand uh, in one of Marcus's buildings out at the waste treatment plant where he's got some room that uh, we can temporarily hold it. So uh, we've got that pretty well covered. Um, we talked about the downtown lighting project. Uh, so we've got some odds and ends there that we are, we are completing on it. Those of you who are at the car show, uh, Probably got a lot of compliments on uh, the speaker systems and everything. It did turn out turned out very very well. Uh, we have uh, some of the uh, accoutrements to finish up to be able to uh, get the Christmas decorations up, uh, the fixturing and everything to, to put on. So we'll be working pretty hard on that. Correct, Randy? Yes. That's a good answer, Randy. <laughs> Randy's doing a good job with all that. Um, the lids uh, for the digester, the covers that uh, will uh, take the place of the pole barn that fell down. Uh, we're working towards the completion of that on by by winter, and uh, 
the Liberty folks have cut a check for us. And we, are, we are moving forward with that. That's on, on track. Again, some of this is at the convenience of the folks and the materials that are available. Um, parking lot behind the Hazen building. Some of you have seen some construction going on there. Uh, Randy and Dwayne were pretty heavily involved in that the last uh, week to 10 days. And I'm happy to say they, they completed it before the big rain came, and boy, did it make a difference. Really looked good, didn't it? Yeah. The, uh, the final phase of that is the paving of it. There's a big square there that needs to be paved, but all of the infrastructure is in and complete and working. Uh, that'll be done tomorrow? Yeah, tomorrow. Okay. Um, the next uh, project uh, will be uh, in regards to drainage. Uh, they'll be taking a look at uh, Monroe Street in front of Advanced Magnetics. We talked about that at one time, but our, uh, our cameraing of that area, which had created the situation down on 9th Street in front of the bank and such, was, uh, was attributable to uh, a change in the size of the the drain line, the, the stormwater drain line to accommodate a telephone cable that was run across there years ago. So we're going to do some more due diligence on that, probably break the street up to see how what, what is involved there. This, this cable may not even be something that's being utilized anymore, analog type stuff. We, we, we just don't know. But Mike actually dropped the size down to be able to get under the cable. Well, oh. Uh. Mm. Yeah, pinch that hose, you know? Yeah. So we're going to take a hard look at that, and uh, we're also doing some uh, drainage review out in Manitow Heights, correct? Correct. We're looking at some things there that we might be able to utilize the same technology that we used behind uh, the Hazen building to help relieve some, some issues out there until, until, until enough monies are put together that we can do a full bore upgrade on our. Uh, stormwater drainage, uh, which begs us the question of uh, Main Street. Uh, we have an investigation going on right now with our engineering firm to revisit the Main Street project, and we next half of next year we want to finish the Main Street from where uh, the state paved We'll finish clear out then to uh, uh, Monticello Road, but along with that, we'll be taking the street up and uh, uh, upsizing the uh, uh, stormwater drain going through there. Uh, everything goes to Main Street. It all comes to Main Street and then heads out north. Uh, the plan would be to uh, upgrade the, the main artery and uh, root cut any laterals coming from east or west to try and uh, alleviate some of our issues. So we hope bigger is better. And we've got an engineering firm studying that with the force right now. Okay, uh, Monday, the paving of the alley right next to RTC will be taken care of. Uh, that's scheduled to mill it down to an acceptable level and redo it. it I don't know if you've been down there lately. Oh, yeah. <laughs> It'll oh, yeah. jar your teeth. Right. We're going to get that taken care of. Uh, we're still uh, we're still evaluating the, and, and working towards the uh, two mains that Derek had mentioned to you about the, the water mains that need to be looped. We have discovered that were uh, put in years ago and they should have been looped to help with uh, rusty water and what have you, and uh, we're going to move forward with that, and hopefully some of the ARPA funds can be utilized for that, and be used for that. Um, we've got, uh, I think I told you all about Cheryl Morphew, who uh, is the lead for uh, uh, Mayor Todd Barton that uh, we met about, oh, six, eight weeks ago when we went to Crawfordsville, shot in. Rick Figlio and I went there and talked with uh, Mayor Barton about his economic development program in Crawfordsville and this lady who works for him on a pay-by-for-performance basis. 
has just done some really, really neat things. We're working with her now on some things here at the city. Uh, most recently, we've uh, had some meetings with, uh, she's come to town, we've met with Joe McCarter at RTC and talked about the broadband effort here in Fulton County and Marshall County that RTC has been involved in now for some time. It's amazing. Now all of a sudden it is, boy, it is the hot potato for the state, for the rural areas, broadband. You know, we gotta get broadband to the rural areas. Well, we got a lot of people at the state who don't uh, know, and I discovered this in working with Okra, Danny Spinner and such, that don't know what we've been doing. Suzanne Crouch, when she was a <coughs> lieutenant governor, she was blown away to find out what was happening here in the broadband area. You got Wi-Fi here? Really? Yeah, we've had it for a while. So we're uh, we're having on November the 3rd, and the telephone company's sponsoring it, but we've con reached out, Cheryl, and I reached out to the state dignitaries that we know, and we've got uh, Lieutenant Governor and representative uh, for a uh, showcase of Rochester Day, and Joe's gonna do a broadband presentation and such. And it's where the dignitaries that are coming Denny Spinner, he's the former mayor of Huntingburg, and he's the president of Okra. Uh, Jerry White, who's our Okra Community Affairs representative. Scott Rudd, the director of the Indiana Broadband Office for the state of Indiana. David Beer, who is uh, part of the Indiana Economic Development Council. And a big hitter by the name of Sarah Salisbury, who is the IEDC state site selection manager. This is a lady people contact at the state when they're looking for a place to light, place to come, or whatever. She's never been to Rochester. Uh, we're going to have her here and uh, <coughs> show the show. And when they leave, we will be more than just a pin on the map. And that's November the 3rd. I've asked our president of our council be there that day, also as a representative of FEDCO. Uh, Rick Figley will be there as the Board of Works representative, also on the FEDCO board. Uh, we've got Jillian, who's going to be there. She's, she's uh, participating in part of the presentation, as well as Jana Vance, who's going to talk some about the schools and the quality of life here in regards to the schools. So these people are going to get a pretty good dose of uh, this is what Rochester's all about. So we want to put our best foot forward that day. So that I'm sure you all need it. Well, I was you know I was really debating on that. I, you we know, did have a very lengthy conversation. We did. We kicked that around lots. Well, he is the president, and he has been the president for some time. The yeah. was busy. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. We didn't hear that. Did, you, did, that, did that go across the TV? <laughs> Chester the monkey? Is that what you said? It wasn't available? <laughs> so, no. Um, <laughs> and, you know, we're, we're going uh, to we're going to uh, take uh, Sarah around and show her all of the sites. Everybody else gets a presentation. And she's going to get to go to sites and look at different places around town. And, and, and it's going to be put on out at the uh, uh, RTC's maintenance garage. Uh, so we're right there. And we'll be able to take a peek at the industrial park and, and that, that. So anyway, we're just introducing Rochester. Um, and the last thing on the project list that I wanted to mention was I'd sent uh, all of you some information about the meadows, uh, Manitoba Meadows. Uh, did you get your email? No. When did you send Monday? Yesterday? No. Okay. Don't look at me. You okay. didn't involve me in that. Okay. Oh, I'll get you. Really? Okay, get you a hard dog. You got it? <coughs> that was Monday. Monday? You see everybody on the list? Nope. You chose no. the wrong reply email, then. Mm. Yeah, you didn't send it to um, the council. 
a Senate, uh, I think a Senate each individual. I'll see. No, anyway, okay, I get you hard copies in. Uh, we completed our uh, due diligence uh, in regards to the presentation. We were given what the, the, the plans were at Commonwealth and Baker Tilly uh, involved in doing the due diligence as to what was going to be involved and sent that off. And I know uh, Andius got it, uh, the developer and uh, uh, Christopher Janet, I know they got their copies, uh, basically saying, you know, here's what would have to be done to uh, uh, fulfill this uh, this increase in the population south of town because you're looking at a minimum of 2,000 people uh, to be serviced by this. Uh, the infrastructure development for just the waste wastewater and and, uh, and water only is 14.3 million. Yeah, and and just to preface this, those are not those, those are very high level high. Um, 30,000 foot view numbers that there would be more uh, work done to get to finalize those, but that is the She rough, says yes. high level, what she means is they're the bare base of yes. what, what we looked at. They, that doesn't cover uh, uh, public safety costs, or it doesn't cover anything. It doesn't cover stormwater or drainage because that's going to be another um, large issue that will have to be addressed with that particular area. Yeah, we sent we sent copies to the county folks as well, and uh, one of the comments, Chada had mentioned it, the stormwater. One of the comments the engineering firm made was, the county needs to really take a hard look at this because you're taking 80 plus acres from a permeable uh, situation to or a pervious situation to an impervious situation, and uh, that's a, a, a Minnow Creek issue. Mm -hmm. Uh, and unless it's done properly and, and to the, to the I mean, in other words, put some money into it, it could create a lot of problems for the folks that are already involved with Minnow Creek, vis a via Bellwood Acres or whatever. You, you just, it's going to be a lot of water, a lot of drainage. Uh, so there's just some, some infrastructure things that need to really be studied and looked at. and. Uh, I can say uh, the developer reached out to me and said thank you very much. He said we're uh, we're going to be going through this, and it was it was uh, it was a very complete complete study, it was broken down step by step by step by step. So I will get copies in in your hands, and I'm sorry. You didn't Is that the one you text message? Yes. Yeah. Okay. yeah. You got that? Yeah. yeah. Did you get it too? We're reading. I'm trying to figure out where it was. I know. Me too. So oh, okay. Okay. Probably not a It may very <laughs> No, no. And I, I sent it by text to everybody. A PDF by text. Okay. Yeah. So but anyway, we've uh, we've got that got that going in. Like I say, they are studying it. The next step would be a sit down meeting to discuss it in, in more detail. Uh, the letter states that this is something the developer would be on the hook to take care of. Uh, we only have $14.3 million, and we certainly wouldn't want to put it on the back of our utility customers. Uh, that said, rates. Yeah. Pretty <clears throat> so, but, uh, and that's the way we have operated with projects smaller than this. We've not seen anything this large, but the developer would pay for the infrastructure, turn it over to the city, and then if there's some payback in the, the future relative to people coming on board who are also going to utilize it, then there can be a rebating program. And that, you know, with the help of Baker Tilly and Commonwealth, that's pretty much how folks deal with it. So we've gone forward with that. Um, that's a... Uh, City's pretty busy. We are busy. <clears throat> we are very, very busy. It's keeping shot out of the bars and the drills, you know. So. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to have to hear that. <laughs> <laughs> now, uh, got to have pretty good energy level, though. 
It's mm -hmm. John says to me the other day, she says, I'm tired. I said, oh, gosh, okay. No, I believe I used the word, you have exhausted me. <laughs> <laughs> I have exhausted Well, it's like a different connotation. You guys, I love that high level. Yes, I'm just exhausted. <laughs> I don't know. Most of you have been around for the whole run of what we've been doing. And it, yeah, there's a lot that yeah. we've done, but there's a lot that we're still wanting to get done. And uh, Sean, I just appreciate yeah. it. Uh, you know, I keep giving you all the praise and credit you you you're this, you're hanging in there and doing a good good job really you. Like she, you know she keeps me from falling off the face of the earth when it, you know you don't even you're not even thinking no no i'm not i'm not even going to go that route so you know it's a it's a good thing you're doing good stuff appreciate it um okay that takes us right down to our reports from some other folks that are doing some good things Chief uh, Butler. Uh, good evening. Uh, for the month of September, vehicle fires, one in the city, one in Rochester Township. Auto fire alarms, one in the city, four in Rochester Township. Brush, grass fires, two in Rochester Township. Calls for smoke, one in the city. Accidents, two in the city, three in Rochester Township, two in Richland Township. Medical assist, 26 in the city, 13 in Rochester Township, three in Richland Township. Gas leaks, two in the city. Canceled calls, two in the city, two in Rochester Township for a total of 65 runs, and we conducted one drill. Pending your questions, that concludes my report. How's our project with the baby box going? Um, I've got one bid back from one contractor and waiting on another one. I received a phone call from the builder of the box, and it is about complete. So I'm trying to get a um, contractor nailed down that the Knights of Columbus uh, accept and paying for. I did get with um, Cottage Watch to do the alarm system and they can handle that. Um, there will be a, a small monthly alarm monitoring fee that, that we'll pick up at the department. But other than that, um, we already have the baseline with, we have an in-house alarm that doesn't go anywhere, but he'll be able to work off that and, and send it or it'll be monitored from that point. Great. Good work, Chief. Good work. Um, those of you who know what that project is all about. Then, okay. okay. Any questions for the chief? Thanks, Tom. Chief Thank Shines. you. Uh, for the month of September, I'll give you the Cliff Notes version. We had 15 accidents, 32 warnings, 49 offenses, 46 case reports, 528 calls for service. 18 lockouts, 8 towed vehicles, and 17 people incarcerated. Um, and then I don't, I don't have the crimes lodged. I'll, I'll get you that next one. I didn't get around to it today. Um, last Thursday, we've been going through the, the application process, trying to hire one more to get us back up to full staff. Last Thursday, we took two to the Board of Works and, uh, for interviews, and the, the conditional offer was given to Bryce Michael. Uh, for for employment, he's from Logansport. He's uh, 21, just got married, homeowner. Um, seems like he's got a good good head on his shoulders. So we'll see how that that comes through. I, I, I have high hopes for him. Uh, Brady Briggs, our most recent hire. Uh, he'll be going to the academy probably after the first of the year. I'm not sure if it's going to be the January session or. Uh, the early spring session yet. I have a feeling that I think that the January session is already full, so it would probably be early spring before he goes to the academy. You know, I and I was remiss in, in this. Uh, you know, pictures of Brady. I yeah. think Shada took some. Got it. Wes, would you like to have a picture of the swearing in? Absolutely. Okay. <clears throat> okay. And, and I apologize for not notifying okay. you. But. Uh, no, another fine young officer. Just you've done a good job, Chief Shots. You Thank really you. have. There's uh, a lot of folks out there not wanting to be police officers these days. You're doing a good job of finding sure. some a good lot of people, talent. A lot of people not want to work out there. Well, well that's true. Really police officers. That's that that too, which which makes having police officers more important. <laughs> But uh, you've done a good job in the recruiting process. Make sure they're not taking any calls from Florida. 
Well, I mentioned this at the Board of Works meeting, and I want to make the same statement here. Uh, I had the opportunity uh, to go over to Warsaw several times this year for, for the wagon wheel productions, you know, I, I really enjoyed that. And each time I'd go over, uh, I'd see this huge city police officer who was the canine officer, and he found, it, found out I was mayor, and we'd chit-chat a little bit, and we'd go, and he finally said to me, and he said, you know what, mayor, you have a class department. <clears throat> Uh, wow, that's high praise coming out of the Warsaw uh, group. So, you'd be complimented, Chief. Good Thank job. You. I appreciate good it. Job. It's been a group group effort, and we've got a good group. Yes, you do. Any questions for the Chief? Okay, uh, Randy? Um, you want to come out here so you're on TV? Not really. Not really. Not really. <laughs> 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 Close up. <laughs> Come on up here, Randy. We want to want to. They want to see who question, you are. Randy. Come on up here. Did you guys ever realize he was so shy? <laughs> okay. Go on. Okay. It's, it's it's right on you. Yeah. Um. I've been helping the street barn. Uh, I also met with uh, Lewis Backhoe, Brand Tech, and uh, Michigan Contracting yeah. for a uh, estimate on what the nine lights would cost and less concrete since we're not sure what all we're going to have to cut out. You're looking at 119690 Okay, I was a little off. Yeah. Um, and that includes an electrical panel, which we'd already met with Robin from Duke Energy, and we'll put one in by the pole between the annex building and what used to be the old Kroger building. We can tie in there and then we'll end up boring and pick up, these pick state. up all those lights. Yeah, yeah, okay. we'll bore under the state highway. Good. Um, but yeah, we have the street department, and we have a November 2nd in dot meeting for um, a field check. So the MDOT people are coming up and we're going to walk the 2.2 miles of sidewalk that's on the 2023 Federal Highway program. Grant. Yeah, but, and then we tend to forget that, but there is a grant coming up for 2023 that we've obtained for that sidewalk situation throughout the community. <clears throat> that's all I got. Okay. Well, it's funny, you've been doing Good stuff. You and you and Dwayne, you've been going like a house <clears throat> fire, and uh, no fire. Good crew. No fire. <laughs> I'm sorry, not a house fire. Bad choice of words. Yeah, good crew. You're doing good stuff. Thank you. Yep. Thank you. Okay, Dwayne's in Indianapolis, so he wasn't here. And Marcus uh, is out of town. Derek's coaching right down in Indianapolis. So that, that's all we have tonight. Uh, reports of committees. Uh, Betco, first one. Pardon me? Betco is your first one. Betco is the first one. Okay. And I don't have a report. Oh, yay. <laughs> yeah, you can. Hey, kind, of in, kind of in transition, aren't they? Well, I, I mean, I haven't been there for, it's probably been over over a month. You know, we were dealing with. Don't mention that. Yeah. Well, we, we were dealing with the COVID, and then right after that, we got our vacation, so I'm back. He said to tell Goodman his shoulders are getting pretty yeah. weak. <laughs> and I didn't get a hold of Tiffany for the minutes. Usually, I catch up with her. But okay. Okay. Well, they're in a they're in a state of flux right now, trying to figure out what's uh, going to happen with the that good director and such. Uh, Israel, all know Terry Lee resigned. So it's kind of in a you know, up in the air right now as to uh, who's going to be hired or what they're going to do. So um, okay, we'll go right on down to uh, park board. I was in quarantine at that time, so I did not. You were in quarantine. <laughs> <laughs> no report. No report. Sweet. Okay. Uh, I like these. Keep going. Well, park Party? board's, park Sorry, board's moving. I have, I have a report. <laughs> Raise your hand if you have a report. Yeah, if you have a report. <laughs> I, I guess, I guess. Park, board, park board's moving forward on basically wrapping up the uh, the season. 
Uh, one of the things that has been accomplished here that uh, wasn't on the list tonight because it's pretty well wrapped up and uh, the two ladies, Andy, Andy Lee and, and her sister Wendy Zant, uh, took it right over the goal line, the splash pad situation in the main park. Uh, Wes had a nice picture in the newspaper of it, and it's all raring to go for next year. The water department, the water board voted to uh, pick up the tab for the water, and the uh, Board of Works picking up the tab for the, uh, uh, the drain, the drainage part of it. So it'll be in our tent. You know, it's going to be a Manitou Mountain situation. We will be maintaining it. Not, not sure what. Uh, what the future process will be, that we have the splash pad, but uh, there's been some discussions, including the chief being involved, we might want to fence that, fence it in. Uh, lots of things happen, you know. Uh, so we're, we're going to be taking a hard look at that, but they did a, did a great job of pushing that, like I say, over the, over the goal line. And, and I shared this with Andy and Shada, I was over at Good to Go over here, pick up a drink before our meeting here and uh, they've got a card up there by the cash registers and thank you community have you seen that chase yeah they were taking donations so yeah. they would round up yeah when you purchase something round up and uh, um, change they collected over a thousand dollars towards the splash pad yes yes so thank you community uh, a lot of folks stepped up and gave gave contributions and donations and we thank you and say truly another Another Manitou Mountain type of venture, but uh, Andy and Wendy, thank you very, very much. Okay, uh, Rochester DZA and Council on Aging, Councilman Smith. Unbeknownst to you guys, everybody that's absent ceded me all of their time, so <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> uh, especially okay. Garrett. Uh, <laughs> Uh, BZA meets tomorrow, and uh, there's two things on the agenda, which is their uh, shortest agenda for, I think, yet this year. So, uh, they on uh, Wolf's Point, if somebody that wants to add a covered attached deck to their home, and it's going to be where they need a variance, and the other one is a new building being constructed at uh, 412 West 11th, and they need a little variance. So those two things are on the agenda tomorrow, which probably won't take very long. The Fulton County Council on Aging, we met yesterday, and uh, it, we had about an hour-long meeting, and it was very positive in that building and, and in the room. Things are picking up at the center, and uh, so, Transpo report, because trips have been on the increase in the month of September, they averaged over 60 rides a day, and, and so far in the month of October, they're averaging more than 90 trips a day. So, there was a big increase in trips from September of 2020 to September of 2021. So, yeah. the new hours are helping and uh, people are, are getting back into calling uh, Transpo, which has uh, hired a new driver yesterday. And uh, so, so they're going to be adding more trips. So that's, that's exciting. RSP report was very encouraging. Ann has been busy and was in a fall conference over in Shepshuana about three weeks ago. Tomorrow heading for a conference uh, that uh, White Star is putting on and it's a conference to let RSVP groups know what trips are available, what they're thinking for next year. And uh, it, uh, so the, the center is working on putting together a spring program and summer program for their trips. There are, I will tell the community, there are still eight seats left for the trip to Branson. That's $699 a 
person with double occupancy and uh, they're very excited about that it's a uh, day after leaves the day after Thanksgiving Friday there is a Halloween party starts at 930 with bingo it transitions from bingo to chair volleyball which has been a big hit out to, over there and well attended and uh, I've kind of committed to go play uh, so when is this? When is this? Well, I don't know that I'm going to play on Friday but it, it's Monday Wednesday and Fridays right after bingo is chair volleyball and it's you do literally sit in a chair and there there are some folks in wheelchairs it's uh, I've, I've talked to a couple that have played it's it's pretty fun and good exercise for the group and then do you suppose we could uh, get a city team established yeah and well, then I, I on, see, on Friday see. with the Halloween party it's going to transition uh -huh. into lunch so you ripped us into dodgeball. Big, big a good day over there. <laughs> and I think uh, we still got our shirts. Yeah. I'm okay. sorry. Yeah. I'm, yeah. No. We've had city dodgeball teams here until the COVID thing yet. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Sure. I see my my two chiefs out there not looking real happy about that. They were main participants in the, uh, the dodgeball thing. We'd go play the junior high kids. Yeah. Remember that okay. comment about being exhausted? Yeah. Play dodgeball with him as a cheerleader. Now, you know, the first one we went to, they told me, well, it's only going to be a few games. Well, what was it, six hours? It was one day after was another. Six six hours hours hours. Hours. We had yeah. the whole school. Yeah. 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 They got to rest in between, but we didn't. <laughs> I'm pretty confident that the center doesn't have the stamina for six, for six hours. hours. Yeah. Day, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, it it has been uh, there. There just is a good positive that's good uh, feeling and and uh, energy about that building, and it's picking back up. So, barring questions, that's uh, the extent of my report. Have you have you had any other discussions about the uh, the ownership of the garage building? Had a uh, discussion, and I've I've got a call out to Greg Heller, who may have some other information um, that. I had another thought. I mean, we know approximately the time frame for that. There's got to be in the library all sorts of stuff on the New Sentinel archives, I'm sure. Tons of stuff there. Uh, we go and research that. I may just go do that for you. But, you know, of course, Wes is always available to us down the basement and dig through all the old papers. Or, you don't really have to the basement, do you? Mm -hmm. No, they're upstairs. Oh, you, really? I don't think you want to go in our basement. It's kind of scary. <laughs> oh, okay. <laughs> but no, I thought about that. I'm sure it's all over the papers from back then. The situation. So, okay. Good. Anything else for Councilman Smith? Thanks, Marty. A pretty good yep. report. Pre-board and EMS, Frank? I was out of state for the pre-board meeting. I've not seen the minutes for that yet. So okay. I assume they met, but beyond that, I don't know. I, as, as I, and I'm going to be semi-accurate, I'm sure. Eric Bittinger came in to let me know that the, the tree board meeting last Thursday, they had a representative from Duke um, uh, and their arborist program, and they're working with the tree board to uh, donate some trees for the city to, to plant. So that's going to be a nice, nice thing coming up. And the uh, tree inventory is complete. That's done. So yeah, they, they've done some nice things and they're moving along. And by the way, Randy, uh, we need to uh, be cognizant of the fact if we remove a tree or something, we need to make note of it. And we'll get it to them so they can keep their inventory up. 
make, make note to self if we take down a tree. Well, or storm damage. That's or storm one. damage. If we have, if anything comes down and there's storm damage in one, um, that's the other one we need to make sure we get over to the tree board too, if it's in the tree lawn. I, mean, I, I think maybe I'll ask you, if you will, to make note, go to the next tree board meeting. Because now they have it complete. They just and they were putting together their system to make sure that we are working together to to make that so it's it's seamless and it works well. So if you'd make a note to go to the next meeting, I think they would appreciate that. Okay, uh, water board Garrett's not here. Um, that's. Uh, that's about all there is. Any legal issues? Uh, Andy? No, I did help the uh, water board uh, complete its purchase of a, uh, a property that right. from someone recently. Um, uh, it, it's, I don't always report, but uh, uh, typically at least uh, once a month there's some type of an ordinance violation I appear in court on. And, uh, often that's a default judgment. Uh, the person will issue the ticket. Sometimes doesn't show. Sometimes they show an agreement of judgment. Every once in a blue moon, they'll show and contest it, and we'll set a contested hearing that has, a, I think, had one earlier this year, but it's been a while. Um, so that, that still goes on and, and uh, assisted with uh, drafting some things like the resolution you passed tonight and uh, got some information from Eric um, of Baker Tilly about the, uh, 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 the reg regulatory restrictions on, on the ARP funding and things like that. So that kind of stuff continues to go on. Yes, and I know we keep you pretty busy too, and I, I thank you for that. Seems like there's always something. I appreciate it. Um, well, uh, that pretty much concludes the agenda. I would motion like to adjourn. Motion to adjourn. Second. Goodman made the motion. Seconded. Seconded. Those in favor? We're adjourned. Thank you. Don't forget, Boo Fest is Friday night. Boo Fest Friday night. Trick or treat is Sunday. Is it still Friday right. right. to seven to one. Maybe. I've one. seen it on Facebook, four thirty to five thirty. Yeah, okay. four thirty to five thirty. We'll be here.